Oh, which one I want to... Oh! <laughs> this pot. <gasps> Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue, and we're here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. I did do my hair, like, after I filmed the majority of this, so it's gonna be... Do you like this look? Because I like this look. I spent so much time in this look. It's funny, like, how much just a... a a haircut and a color will change you over, right? Because, like, now I suddenly feel a little bit more confident. All the times that I've been like, no, no, I'm not gonna, I don't need to get a trim. And so, don't worry about me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. All those times I was like that, man, I just. <sighs> I really should have just gotten a trim. Possibly a little bit of a throwback, but I like this look. Could we call it adorably retro? had a 15 year old self-identified goth chick who told me I was in fact old lady goth lace and the 1990s and big sleeves I'm guilty of every little bit of it it all looks good on me okay so that's out of the way now we're good right um, anyway, I'm going to run with it. Raina said she'd lend me some cute little spooky season barrettes to put up in there. Or I could get a tiara. I got some beans to blanch and some stuff to organize. So come on along. Let me show you this week's beans. Y'all, there's a whole bunch of beans here. Um, so this is... I have them cooling down in some water. I did have a bunch of them in the, the crisper in the refrigerator and just, if I keep them in the crisper any longer, they're not gonna be so crisp. Here's what we're gonna be putting up today. I have mixed these all together. Got these dragon tongue beans. They're super pretty with purple streaks. Got romas. And I have a whole bunch of Kentucky Blue Lake pole beans, I believe. I'm gonna get these blanched and frozen. So last year's harvest was just, <laughs> last year's harvest was incredible. There were so many. Um, and apparently this is great soil for doing beans, right? We still have pressure canned beans down in the basement. That'll be fine until we finish using them probably in May or June. There's like, <laughs> there's probably 25 cans down there. Since we've got a whole bunch of shelf stable beans, I'm gonna try and freeze them this year. I do like the texture of the frozen beans better for like when it's a component in a dish. And also I long to make a green bean casserole that has, you know, something to chew in it. So I wanna give this a shot. In comes the blanching pot. This is a blanching pot. What it is not is a double boiler, which I thought I was purchasing. I bought this by accident and knew that I would eventually need it. So I hung on to it and it wound up in the basement for a long time. <laughs> it's the lid, a standard pot on the bottom, and a basket on the top that has holes in it. And the idea behind this is basically to conserve the hot water. I have trimmed the stem ends off of my green beans and washed them. I'm gonna get this going. I did do a test drive on this where I like lifted the basket out and oh, which one I want to oh, <laughs> this pot <gasps> it made a mess. So I don't, I'm not sure how I should practice this with cold water before I heat it, huh? Let's do that. Ah, oh, that's the key. Okay, so when I was here. All right, the biggest key is don't go fast. Like if I lift this out, right, it gets water everywhere. But if I lift it out slowly, it does not. If I let it sink in slowly, it's fine. Put a little more water in there. And we'll get that on the stove. All right, I think I know what I'm doing now. This is how we're going to blanch. We're gonna get the pot all nice and bubbly. And then once that's going on, I'm going to put in really as many green beans as will fit. And then those blanch for three minutes on the dot. And then we will very slowly take the basket out, 
bring it to the sink and plunge it into this bucket, which I'm gonna keep full of cold water. I'm going to make an honest attempt to organize this week in terms of what I wanna get done outside and putting all the things to do that in one central location. So let me show you what's going on. Winter rye. We forgot to plant last year. I've got 15 pounds of it. We're gonna scatter it in the back and see how much we can supplant the newly mowed knotweed that Bill's, so this is gonna go down probably tomorrow after Bill mows. New cat's dishes. Are these not the cutest thing in the whole world? And it's got a, <laughs> I fell in love with them. I need to get these through the dishwasher and change out the old bowls and peel off the, the stickers. I have two bulbs that I want to plant and I've, I've got a great place for these. These I want to put in as well as some seeds. What did I get? I got sweet peas. These are not eating peas. These are pretty peas. Sweet peas are generally not, um, I think of these more as a spring crop. Uh, but I want to give them a shot. I'm going to put them where the other peas had been and let them just crawl up the trellis. And depending upon how long it stays temperate, we might have some pretty blooms. I'll surely have enough days to flower, but the question really is, will I have enough days with enough light? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like four or five of each and just plant them in the rows and we'll see what happens, you know? And if it works out, fantastic and I've still got seeds for spring. And then I got some of these, and these are for the goth garden. My goth garden wasn't nearly as gothy as I wanted it to be. My sunflowers faked me out, man. This is what I thought I was planting in the goth garden. Oh my goodness. There's another one all the way down here. It's dark red sunnies, just enchanting. She absolutely is beautiful. Look at all of this mustard over here that's going to seed. Oh, I love these autumnal, awesome sunflowers. These are all starting to go to seed. Seeds are ripening up underneath this vegetable stuff. And we're gonna leave these and feed the burbs. These black pansies that we planted are doing really, really well. Oh, cricket. So I'm, I'm going to be doing a little more sewing. This is a black knight scabiosa, uh, which is also known as a pincushion bush. It could possibly be very tall. I have one of those on the corner by the irises and it's easily seven and a half feet. I'm gonna try a handful of these. This looks like we might, if we're lucky, we might get a few of these before the end of October. I do solemnly swear to make a decision about whether to plant these now or to start them early for spring. All right, there it is. I could, in all likelihood, get all this done in one day, but that would be one very motivated day. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how this goes. On any given day, I, do a little bit and then I rest a little bit and I do a little bit and I rest a little bit. So having stuff staged like that, where I can just grab something and do it the moment I feel motivated and energized and get it out in the yard, I'm trying to make it easier on myself. We're boiling. Um, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this as an indication that I put too much water in the blancher. Let's see what's going on here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to take a bunch of water out. 
we've got way more water in here than we need. It's a weird sound. Oh, it's the water popping through the, it's the water popping through the holes in the basket. Okay, let's see, can we get this whole thing in here? Yeah, there we go, everybody's in. I'm gonna put the lid on now and time it for three minutes. I'm not gonna lie, I do not love this. All right, but the timer did just ring, so here we go. All right, and I'm gonna pull this up nice and slow. Hey, hey, all right. There's my green beans, and I'm gonna rush them. Okay, so I think my beans went a little longer than I wanted them to. Come here and look. Some of them held up very well and stayed green, and some of them, they turned funny color. Uh, so, I mean, they're delicious. I just tried one. Get this going. So my water is boiling. I'm gonna try and, no, I don't think I wanna remove much more water. All right, here we go, round two. Oop. I'd like to get half of this colander into here, but I also don't wanna raise the water level too high. Okay, hey Siri. Please set a timer for three minutes. Third and last batch. All right. Oh, those look good. Yeah, I'm sure it's the, it's definitely the dragon tongue pole beans that are turning that olive green color. All right, here we go. Last one. This down is cold water. So I'm gonna try and move these down to the bottom where the water is really cold. There we go. Okay, these look really good. And that's that. I'm gonna strain these and let them dry for a little while. And then I'll put them into quart bags and get them downstairs into the freezer. Do I love the blanching pot? Eh, maybe not. Um, what I don't love is the, as soon as it comes up to like a really healthy boil, water starts pouring out between the pot and the basket. And I'm like, do I add less water? If I add less water, it doesn't cover the beans and then I don't wanna run it dry, right? I feel like that might take a little while to get a handle on and understand. If I can, if I can get the puddling under control, I think I would like it a lot better. It may be just that there's a learning curve and I need to work on that. I'll try it a few more times for sure. Um, I did love that I could keep the water hot and I didn't have to wait for more water to come to a boil in between rounds on this. That was really, really nice. So overall, I'd say it's it's fine. It's fine. It's like a three out of five. I'm okay with it. Once I've used it a little while and gotten better acquainted with the ratio of water to whatever on this, I bet you there will be more stars. Um, but for the time being, at least I'm, I'm glad I saved it gave it a shot um yeah yeah and there we go four nice little quart bags that's enough to feed for four to six of us I think as a side potentially enough to make a small green bean casserole thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I got the beans blanched and made a little sense out of that stuff back there I will catch you up soon Take care. Lest you think I left without loot. Oh my gosh.
Can I show you my favorite surprise of this last week? Hello, it's a giant zucchini that was hiding. I, it's got to, I'm gonna parm fry it. What kind of quest? What kind? It's a cooking quest. You knew it was a cooking quest. I mean, clearly it was an attunement. I think this chain at the end is gonna give us the recipe for the feast. Who wrote this world? <laughs> oh.